Festive Books on Tape present The Year Everyone Forgot About Father Christmas Chapter 1 Letters to Santa In a certain time, in a certain land, once there lived and once there was a man called Santa Claus. He lived in the snowy North Pole, in a wood-carved cluster of a village decorated with ribbons and light. Within, the elves worked tirelessly day and night, crafting toys for the children of the world to be delivered personally to every girl and every boy by none other than Santa Claus himself. Look, here he comes now. Ho, 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 I finished on the toilet. How busy my little elves look to be. Show me, show me, show me do. What did you make while I popped to the loo? I've made a rocking horse. Yes, I suppose it is rather good. And you, what have you made? Say so. I've seen all of them, they're rubbish. Well, it's almost Christmas Day. The only thing for it is to read through all of the children's letters and find out what they all want for Christmas. Someone bring me the first sack full. I'll begin at once. But no sack was forthcoming. Come on, where are the letters? Um, we don't have any. What? Not any? Sorry about that. This is most perplexing. I wonder what could have happened. I'm sure if we just wait here a few moments longer, some letters will start to arrive. Yes, I'm sure that's what we should do. And so Santa waited until it was time to go to bed, and the elves all disappeared one by one to their little elfy beds, and still Santa waited. And as the lamps flickered out around him, still he waited for the children's letters to arrive. And they didn't. Festive Books on Tape present The Year Everyone Totally Forgot All About Father Christmas Chapter 2 Christmas Snow Santa Claus was at a loss. None of the little boys and girls had written to him this year. He consulted his elves to find out what the problem might be. I don't understand it. The children never forget about Christmas. Well, according to our research, they now live in a vast and frenetic world. With content on demand and information updated around the clock, it's possible they just don't have the capacity to think about the future anymore. What? Only the immediate present has any meaning to them. Oh, but that's dreadful. You mean they don't even know it's nearly Christmas? Uh, no, well, I mean to say the changing climate has all but ended the white winter of the past. That used to herald the season. Oh, can't we do anything about that? Mm, perhaps if it were to snow, night and thick, picturesque, that might get them in the right frame of mind. Can we do that? <laughs> I'll have the boys whip something up. The elves got out their whisks and whipped up the snow around the workshop, flinging the flakes back up into the air to fall on the world all day and night. It snowed everywhere, and Santa felt sure that that would remind the children to write to him. All night and all the next day he waited, while in the outside world the snows began gradually to melt. No letters came. But still Santa waited, hoping that they were merely delayed. But they weren't. It's just that nobody cared about him anymore. Festive Books on Tape present The time the children all forgot about Father Christmas and he was sad. Chapter 3 The Christmas Twister Santa Claus was trudging about despondently outside in his biggest coat, watching the snowflakes whirl about over the roof of the grotto. Then he thought of something. Perhaps that's why I haven't got any letters this year. Maybe the wind is so strong it's blowing them right past my chimney instead of down into it. He called together the elves, who were busy making toys. For some reason, even though clearly nobody wanted them. Elves, my theory is that I reckon the letters are getting blown away by the wind before they get to us. What can we do? Um, 
Well, that's never been a problem before. There's always been a pretty straight magical conveyance of letters. Is well, that you arguing with me again? Is no. that what we're doing? No, sir. I'll get on to it. No, uh, it, it's just that it sounded like you were being all, all negative again and just arguing with me, just cause. Sorry, sir. I just think... I just think it's better not to be really negative all the time in the grotto. Sir. And the elves went away and thought about the problem. And in the end, they came up with the idea of setting up a big whirlwind over the top of the North Pole with its tip pointing down their chimney so that any letters would get caught in the vortex and pulled down. They sent the reindeer up into the sky over the grotto, and the reindeer at the front bit onto the tail of the reindeer at the back, and they went whizzing round and round in the sky in a big ring until a gigantic whirlwind appeared. Some of the elves hadn't been sure whether that would work, whether that's how air currents behave in real life. But it did work. Ah, now the letters should start to arrive at any moment. And there Santa stood, waiting. He waited, but no letters came. He waited some more, still no letters. And then he waited some more, wondering whether the whirlwind had malfunctioned, for surely the children couldn't possibly have not written to him this year. Not to spoil it or anything, but the kids really hadn't written any letters, and they don't write any. Deliberately. Festive Books on Tape present The Time Father Christmas Was Completely Forgotten and Unloved by Children. Chapter 4 Santa's Lament. Santa Claus was in a bit of a muddle. Ordinarily, the world's children could hardly wait for Christmas, but this year they didn't seem to be interested in it at all. Why wouldn't they write to him? He couldn't understand it. You should have seen his face. I just don't get it. What did I do? I must admit, this whole thing is making me feel rather... Happy. I mean... I mean, if nobody's interested in what I do at all, well then, is it really worth doing it? Perhaps I should just... Continue. ...while I'm ahead. He paced about a bit, thinking very hard. I don't understand it. Don't they like me anymore? I've made such an effort to be fair. I've been very lenient with the naughty list this year. I've taken into consideration both sides of every story. I even set up that courtroom that time and held a full trial with jury, remember that? Yes, sir. I shouldn't imagine the little girl in question is likely to forget it too quickly, It either. was the fairest we've ever been. She couldn't say we weren't fair. I mean, the eventual execution was a shame, but it was reached fairly. Oh, I don't know. I used to think I was loved, you see. But this year, I'm having my doubts. Maybe I am. Or... Maybe I'm... Um... What do you think? I think... I think perhaps it isn't something you should think about when you've been on the eggnog, sir. Put your feet up, have a snooze, and by morning the whole thing will seem a lot brighter, you'll see. Yes, yes, perhaps... Perhaps I will. But Santa would soon find that this year the whole thing was... was. ...brighter at all. Because this, after all, was the year the children cared about Father Christmas. Festive Books on Tape present The Year Santa Lost Control of Christmas Due to Him Getting on a Bit Chapter 5 The Seriously Sneaky Santa Supplantation Syndicate While Santa was getting in a silly old flap inside the grotto, a dastardly scheme was unfolding of monumental dastardliness. Two mechanical servants of evil, miniature robotic terrors crafted from the technology that once allowed titanic robot beasts to do battle across the earth, had been sent out on a dark errand by terrible forces unknown. Great! Now all that's left to do is throw this incredibly dangerous switch, and the machine will build the payload! Right! And then it's up to us to deliver the payload to all the little children! <laughs> Hey, why do you think this is called the incredibly dangerous switch anyway? Maybe 
Maybe you should try it first. Um, I think the boss meant for you to try the switch first, since you're the smartest one. Oh, no. You're his favorite. He'd want you to do it first. You do it. You. You. No, you. Okay, okay. Why don't we both pull it at the same time? Okay, that seems fair. Okay, then. Ready? Ready. You first. He. <laughs> And yet, despite initial dis despite initial setbacks, the terrifying plot was now afoot. The machines were now functioning, wheels turning, conveyor belts running, even the screws were going in properly and not just wiggling about and falling off. But what was being manufactured, and at what cost to Santa Claus's rapidly dwindling sense of self-worth? Festive books on tape present The Time Christmas Was Rubbish and nobody was in the least bit interested. Chapter 6. Santa's Bright Idea Santa didn't know what to do with himself anymore. He was starting to feel like a bit of a waste of space, and he wasn't getting any thinner either. No, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying. It might not help if people are talking about him behind his back is all I mean. He sat in the seat of his sleigh, which was clumped against one wall of the launch tunnel. It was empty of presents, its reins lying limp across the ground, bereft of reindeer. Santa wondered what he could have done wrong. Perhaps they didn't like last year's Christmas. Perhaps I didn't do a very good job of it. Or perhaps, perhaps it's just too old-fashioned now. Maybe I need to modernize. So we go through this every few years and it That's never... That's right, modernize! We need to be... Bang up to date is what we need to be bang up to. What do you know about the information superhighway? Uh, not a lot. Well, well, at its simplest, it's a means of sharing information between electronic devices, computers and the like. Information not only in the journalistic, but also in the digital sense, allowing for messages, images, sounds, videos and so on to be transferred losslessly between machines in potentially any area of the world with only a very slight delay. Mm, so, okay, I see. So, so what you're saying is that the, the internet is... Basically, a series of chimneys. What? No, not really. It's, it's a network of electronics. These chimneys can be filled with children's letters. The kids can write to us on their personal hand screens in a few moments instead of having to write us a letter and post it off, yes? Um, well, yes. Brilliant! Let's do it! Make me a home portal and let's do cyber business! And so Santa gathered together his cleverest and least socially functional elves and set them the task of building him an e-enterprise. Perhaps that would convince the children to write to him. It doesn't. Festive Books on Tape present the year Santa embarrassed himself and everyone else, but it was all right because nobody was even paying enough attention to him to even notice or care. Chapter 7 Christmas Future Santa's elves had finished setting up the servers that they needed to connect to the internet and had built him a website. So, how are we coming along? Is it all up and running on the internet? Yes, we had to custom build some hardware in order to bridge the, um, discrepancy between the protocols used by the human internet and our own winternet. But in the end, we managed to get something working nicely. Well done. I'll never understand all of this technical wizardry. That's why we employ the technical wizard, sir. Hello. 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 Brilliant. Well, let's have a look then. Okay, so, uh... This is basically the front end. This is all <laughs> yeah. you need to worry about. Yeah, this is the website, yes? In layman's terms, this is the website. Yeah. Did you put in everything I asked for? Of course. Do we have animated images of me and snow falling? We do. Do we have Christmas music playing in the background? <sighs> yes, we do. Do we have a Twitter account set up that looks like it lets people talk to me? But instead, it turns out just to be a marketing thing leading to a website where we charge a fiver to print out what looks like a personalized letter from me to the visitor's children, but is in fact just a form letter of the sort that anyone could do themselves at home for free. We certainly do. Well, get rid of that one then. That's not very festive at all, is it? No, sir. No. Brilliant. Thank you. Now we're back in business. But were they back in business? Would this ploy lead to increased letter traffic, 
Or would it transpire that even with the whole process simplified to a few clicks and considerably less typing than they do during a normal visit to Facebook or what have you, the children still can't be bothered writing to him? Find out in Chapter 8 of The Time the Children Still Couldn't Be Bothered Writing to Santa No Matter What He Did! Festive Books on Tape present The Time When Father Christmas Was So Stupid I Don't Even Know What To Do Chapter 8 Readying the Payload More evil robots had now been dispatched to recover the remains of the previous robots, and to see to the delivery of the materials known only as the payload. The machines had been whirring all night, creating many of these little items, each one of them small enough to fit into a child's Christmas stocking. The new robots, each of them resembling a snapping little robot version of Santa, congregated around the products of the night's manufacture. What? What are we actually meant to be doing again? Collecting the payload, yep. And then loading it into the deployment vehicle. Oh. Righty-ho then. Deploying arms to collect materials. Yeah, me collect, too. Collect, 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 children will not know what hits them. Lol. Ready the payload inside the Robo Slay. Robo Slay. Lol. Amusement report. We all sent at once. And thus, these automated antagonists, these mechanical children sired from the living gears of a once great festive juggernaut, gathered together their deadly payload and readied it inside the robo sleigh. Only robotic minions could withstand the terrible force of this distributable dread, but the children of the world, oh, the children of the world would be utterly Have a happy Christmas and do happies all day. Festive Books on Tape present the time when everybody stopped caring about Santa, and nobody liked him, and he was a big stupid beardy fatty with a stupid face, and no friends, and nobody liked him. Chapter 9. Shutting Down Santa Claus had been sitting up all night by the computer, waiting for even a single email to arrive. Hour after hour, the screen remained blank, and was starting to frost up. Well then, I suppose that's it then, isn't it? Clearly they just don't want Christmas anymore. He was, of course, absolutely correct. Wrong! Well then, there's only one thing left to do. Shut it down. Shut everything down. <gasps> the computer? The computer, the workshop, Christmas, all of it. Shut it all down. We're not operating this year. Oh, 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 oh. The I know, I know, but the children have spoken, I'm afraid. And so, as the computer systems shut down and darkness unspooled around him, Santa Claus walked away down the corridor. He stopped and looked sad Merrily. up at the tinsel that hung in twinkling loops on the walls, and he reached up with a grim expression, took hold of the tinsel, and with a great tug, he pulled Left it, all it all up. Soon, heaps of tinsel, Christmas cards, little shiny reindeer and snowflakes, and all manner of other decorations lay discarded, scattered about on the floor. Walls. And Santa Claus took off his fluffy hat, and his huge red coat, and he tossed Folded them, them neatly into the wardrobe! Fire! The elves watched him go, aghast. Santa had had his off days, but he'd never gone this far before. It was plain to see that Santa Claus was very, very happy and cheerful. No, he wasn't. He was miserable.
festive books on tape present the year Father Christmas had failed wretchedly to do Christmas properly and no amount of excuses about being busy or about it being someone else's fault ought to let him off. He's rubbish. Chapter 10 Santa's Big Decision Santa Claus was, by this time, driven to the edge of despair. He had lost everything he cared about, not through carelessness or fate, but through being so repugnantly irrelevant that nobody wanted him to exist anymore. And so, after a lot of thought, Santa decided that his time on this earth was now at its end, and that he would, this very hour, take his own life. Right, no, no! I'm sorry, but to anyone listening, I have to say that this tape is a bumhead and I am not standing on it! I've been trying to fix tape by recording over, but now there's too much to record over. I don't know who made up this story, but it's horrid. I just hope it is made up and not an actual true story about the Snatter, because then we wouldn't have done anything to stop it when this horrid was going on, and we were all just wandering about, not knowing about it, and going do 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 do. There's robots trying to put trick blowing up presents in stockings. Snatter all sad. And apparently, for no reason, every children in world has just decided to be horrible suddenly for no reason. I still like you, Snatter. And I will not have a nasty tape like this in my possession. Now, I don't like recording over proper tapes. It's naughty, but this tape is improper. Storytelling man better start telling a nice story soon or else I'm just going to record all over the whole tape Jingle Bells song and wish you Merry Christmas, etc. And he will not be able not to shut up. <sighs> Sorry. Tirade, tiring. But I've got to stand up for Snatter. Can't believe nobody else is. Shame on you, people listening who did not write to Snatter. I can't believe you. Him all lonely and think him rubbish and hated. We do not hate Snatter. There is no excuse for hate, Snatter. Snatter, in friendly man of the world. <sighs> so, so, um, I have said peace. somewhere in the world possibly a child left who cared about Father Christmas. It seemed doubtful and so he sat in the dark thinking dark thoughts. Will this be the end of Santa Claus? Find out. No it is not! <laughs> Festive Books on Tape present the year everything bad that happened was all Santa's own stupid fault. Chapter 11 Deliverance And so came Christmas Eve, and in the workshop Santa Claus had dismissed all of the elves from his sight and locked himself away not to be disturbed. He closed the door behind him and hung a sign on it, saying, Do not open until Christmas. The elves wanted to check on him, but they could not. Santa was having a very serious think about things indeed. No, he wasn't. He was eating mince pies. Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. He was. He was eating mince pies and drinking sherry and going ho, ho, ho. Oh, but look, it doesn't matter what he was doing in there. The point is that elsewhere, the robo sleigh had been stocked and its pilots rebuilt. So that finally now, on Christmas Eve, the payload could be delivered. One tiny parcel into the stocking of every child in the world. Oh boy! This is our big moment! Right! The boss is going to be so pleased with us. Imagine his face in the morning when the kids open their stockings. Right! And blam! <laughs> no more little children! <laughs> <laughs> the robots climbed into the robo sleigh. After you! Oh no! Not this time! After you! No, it's your turn! The robots stopped bickering and got into the robo sleigh at the same time. Yes, your worshipfulness! Your word is our command. But then they changed their minds and they didn't get into the robo sleigh. Um, on second thoughts, maybe we shouldn't get into that thing. Yeah. I don't know what it is, 
but something tells me I shouldn't get in. The robots ignored that silly little boy and got in the sleigh. Because if they didn't, then they would be written out of the story. Um, um, <laughs> on third thoughts, yeah. I'm getting in the sleigh. Me first. No, me. Thank you. Better. Then they fired up the robo sleigh. No, they didn't. They got out of the robo sleigh and they stopped listening to Bumhead Narrator. Oh. No, stop. They ignored him and fired up the robo sleigh. Oh, yes, Master, of course. Too. No, they didn't. They didn't do what him say. Wow. And I thought you were annoying. <laughs> yeah. Hey. He's nasty, and it's Christmas Eve, and it's not very Christmassy to do nasty things, just because nasty person like him say oh, to do them. Oh, will you be quiet? The others don't interfere like this, so why do you have to? I'm not just going to stand here and let you wait. What others? Start the robo-sleigh now! Okay! Uh, uh, the robots did not start the robo-sleigh! The robots, the robots stopped the robo-sleigh again and got out! Quiet, kid! Yeah, we're not listening to you! No! Well then, well then you leave me no choice! Wiggle they! Wiggle they! What's he doing? He's wiggling the robot sleigh! The payload! Wait, that's the payload? That's what you were going to give out to all the little children? But, but those are just... <gasps> <laughs> and so the meddling little intruder had discovered the identity of the payload. What of it? There was now nothing whatsoever he could do. The children's fate was sealed! <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you noticed yet, boy? Have you noticed yet? <laughs> no! No! Turn off the tape! Stop listening! Stop listening! He's going Festive books on tape present the year all hope was lost and Santa Claus could do nothing to prevent it. Chapter 12 The Payload Revealed! He's horrible! You're horrible! Why do you want to do this? People shouldn't be sad at Christmas and you want to make people sad at Christmas! The story so far! In a rather happy coincidence, this year the children of the world had all elected not to write to Santa Claus, leaving him depressed and despondent with no reason to leave the house. This gave the robotic minions their perfect window of opportunity to deliver to each and every one of said children their mysterious and deadly payload, the identity of which has just been uncovered by this little so-and-so. You're rotten and you want to spoil everything. Oh, I'm wounded. <laughs> Why don't you tell them what it was that you saw? What is the payload? And you sound like a big fat smelly idiot and you've got no brain- Tell them what it is. It tapes. It, this tape. Don't listen to tape. Anyone listening, turn <laughs> it off. It's a trap from Nasty Man. That's very good. Very stupid, but very good. <laughs> You're stupid. Who do you act oh, come on. Who do you actually think is listening to this? This is your copy of the tape. Instead of shouting about turning it off, why don't you just turn it off yourself? Yeah, I will. Go on. Switch it off. I will. That is what I'll do. I don't know how, <laughs> but I'll do that. Exactly. Have you noticed now? You're not recording over us anymore. The silly little boy was right. The payload was indeed this tape. For the robots had been tasked with a very special task. Their task? To increase dramatic tension. In order to draw the attention of their meddling adversary. To hook his attention in the story. And they had succeeded! I don't care about stupid robots! You're a dummy, stupid, idiot, stink-faced creep! <laughs> 
Shout all you want. Nobody's listening. The people listening For to the tape. recorded onto this tape was merely a dramatization of a fictitious account of its own origins. The tapes were not stowed on a ridiculous robo sleigh, nor were they scattered about on the ground. No, these tapes them. had, of course, been distributed already. For how else could this sniveling child have acquired his own copy over which to attempt to record? I... When did you get it, boy? I got it... I got it in... in my stocking. Precisely! <laughs> All the children had a copy. All the children of the world and their childish inquisitiveness was already proving to be their undoing. A cassette. What a strange and intriguing little old thing to a small child. But it isn't difficult to play them even today. Most families have an old player stashed away somewhere or know someone who does and they can be found for next to nothing in the shops, even still. As the children showed the new cassette to their baffled parents, who knew not why Santa Claus would send such a thing, they excitedly fetched down old tape machines from the attic, and more and more lives were snatched away by the corrupting influence of modern technology. <laughs> Archaic technology. And now that the one sole meddling brat who seemed most likely to interfere had himself been gripped by the hex narrative, no, I don't care about its the... dark enchantment had taken hold on him too. No. He was now, like all of the other children of the whole wide world, a prisoner of the anti center <laughs> <laughs> what will become of him next? Find out in our next and last and ultimately terminal exciting episode of The Year the Anti-Santa Conclusively Got Rid of This Particular Insolent Little Stain in the Snow Once and for All. Don't listen! <laughs> End of part 12. Festive Books on Tape present The Year Santa Claus Was Outsmarted by the Wicked Genius The Anti Santa. Chapter 13. The fun part. <laughs> this silly little boy thought he could escape me, but what he didn't realize was that it was my story. He lives only by my will and will die by my command. Observe. Uh, the robo slays every cell, transformed spontaneously into dark matter. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Um, uh, one of the robotic minions dissolved into pretty stars. Ooh! Uh oh! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Delightful! But not every narrative has to be pretty. Let's see, one of the elves, uh, you, you, you'll do. Me? No, I... That's right, that elf there. He popped like a balloon. What? But I. Uh... Look, if you think popping fictitious characters in my own story is horrid, you've got an unpleasant night ahead of you. In fact, in fact, the unpleasantness began right away, because it was at precisely that moment that that wretched little boy marveled to see that his body was still intact huh? and had not been torn and ripped to pieces, huh? for throughout every mote of his being, he experienced the most unimaginable. Will be quite enough of that. I won't have it. Claws. Oh, what a wonderful surprise! But I was just having fun variously destroying characters I've thus far created for this tape. Would you like to be next? 
I'll make it spectacular. I'll make it festive, if you like. What do you think? I'm sure I could make terrible use of those loop strings of Christmas tree lights you keep around here. Or I could leave you entirely untouched, but turn your entrails into tinsel and see how long you last. <laughs> no, I don't think you shall be doing any such thing. Indeed. <laughs> Oh, Santa Claus stopped talking at this stage, as the anti-Santa was becoming rather tired of him. No, I won't be going along with your silly story. Hmm. Well, that's very good, isn't it? I must be getting rather good at this. Successful writers are always talking about their characters eventually coming to dictate their actions to the writer instead of the other way around. I must have created a well-rounded version of you, Santa. If you'll excuse the description. <laughs> you certainly do seem well-rounded from here. <laughs> I, I appreciate the attempt, Santa, but I won't be leaving you much leeway on this one, I'm afraid. I'm busy. This is a rather simple plan I've set up here, but it does still require my attention, if you could. Santa Claus hushed up for a while, there's a good fellow. No, anti-Santa. You have no authority over me. <laughs> this is outrageous. Santa Claus shut his reeking maw and went and jumped off the roof of the grotto so that I could get two minutes peace together. Shout all you want. Nobody's listening. Well, evidently you've come up with a way of rebelling against your narrator. Well done. All right, if I can't control you, I'll send in someone who can. Robots! Master! Attack! Leave nothing of them! Elves, stand firm. He can't hurt you. Remember Christmas. Christmas. Christmas! Christmas! Oh, what on... Get them, robots. Get them. They can say Christmas as many times as they want on the way to the vats. Do we have vats yet? Remind me to narrate no. some... Beg pardon? No. Four, oh, three. Sorry, did you hear me properly? I said get them. I ordered you to get them. Four, oh, three. Robotic servant understand your request, but is refusing to fulfill it. Christmas. Christmas. Right, fine. Fine. Go on, Santa, have your big moment. What have you managed to do? I think the pressing question is, what have you managed to do? There must be a flaw in your plan somewhere, must oh, there? Oh, for figgy pudding. I don't just launch into these things, you realize. I do actually put some thought into what I... Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. We are doing... To chush, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Shut up, I'm thinking. No, but I've been doing a thinking too. I've been thinking that you're probably thinking he's stuck in the tape because of my evil magic and so that's why he can go, oh no, I'm in a tape and can talk to people and wiggle they, but except, though, why is it then that I can talk back to him when I am just narrating tape and not in fact stuck in? Hmm? Hmm? Be quiet, no. And because I think that actually, maybe, I'm not only person getting a bit stuck in tape. The stupid boy stopped whittering on and making absolutely no sense. <gasps> the enchantment that pulls the children into these tapes doesn't work on me. What? Why would I design it so it could possibly work on me? That would be ridiculous. I... What are you staring at? He's more hideous than I ever imagined. Shut up. Oh, cheers. At least I'm not a tiny little fictitious... Wait, you can see me. <laughs> oh dear, Auntie Santa. It seems like your little hex may indeed have backfired, doesn't it? A uh, temporary physical manifestation. Plainly, my storytelling is just so good that I find even myself pulled into the story. But it's still my story. I am no prisoner here. Oh, 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 no. Well then, until you find your way out, why don't you come with us? To what end? What do you intend to do with me? Find out. Next time. Oh, no, you don't! End of part 13. No!
Well, good luck. I mean, he's dodged that one a few times, and he always comes back. It's, it's definitely worth trying, mm, though. Well, and trouble is, we've used most of the banishment techniques we actually know. We'll have to get R&D on it. Have we tried an enchanted ring yet? Um, uh, don't think we have. No, you have. That was 40, uh, no, 15 Christmases ago, oh, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Course. Oh, well. You realise, don't you, that you're all living on borrowed time here? I mean, apparently I need to narrate with more conviction, and I'm working on that, but once the story starts listening to me again, there's going to be a lot of red faces around here. Right, was that a threat? Um, yes, I believe it was. Right, thought as much. Start what you're doing, everybody, and don't move. Nobody wants this to take long, so I'll move through it as quickly as possible, <laughs> and we can all be home by tea. Who's this? I have been sent thanks ever so much, to oversee this cassette recording and examine it for evidence of dangerous malpractice resulting in any and all threats to the continued survival of the workers you see here before you. You, I should say, represent a rather significant threat. Yes, I should say so. By which I mean, ultimately, that you pose a concern to the well-being of these elves. I entirely concur, and I wonder why, given that I pose such a big threat to an elf, That's right. your assessment is that you should strut about in front of me, provoking my temper. For however many more minutes you think you'll be able to keep it up before I end you. Now, you see, that's just the sort of carrying on I'm talking about. It's that sort of talk that raises the flags in the first place, you see. I dare say. Santa, who is this? I'm not sure, but all guests are welcome in the workshop. Just an appointed overseer from the regulatory board. Act as if I wasn't here. Yeah, thank you, I intend to. Santa, can we please continue the interrogation? It was so much more interesting than any of this. Oh, it's not an interrogation. I'd just like to know what damage you've done or plan to do so that we can plan around it. I don't think that's too much to ask for for Christmas, is it? I have to say, you had me worried for a while before I realized you were behind it all. <laughs> oh, wonderful, thank you. I mean that if Christmas falls apart and it's your doing, well, oh, that's rather to be expected from you, isn't it? At least it didn't just fall apart on its own, you see. It's a bit of a relief. <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, I really thought for a while there that the children of the world really had forgotten to write to me. That they'd stopped caring about Christmas. Well, now I know it was just the story you made up for the tape. Well, it's a weight off my shoulders, to be honest. <laughs> Indeed. Careful, that's a threatening tone you're taking there. It was well spotted. So outline the plan for me again. The, the tapes are hexed. The tapes are hexed. The enchantment causes the narrative to be more captivating. And the children who listen to it become the, the captives. All that fluff about the robo sleigh was made up, I'm afraid, to enrage any children not already captured by the festive music and little elf voices and such forth. Rage is a very strong emotion, you see. It keeps people listening. And how did you create this hex? How does anyone create a hex? I used a hex editor, of course. <laughs> you reckon the children didn't write to Santa Claus because they were trapped in your tape? <laughs> now we come to it. <laughs> No, I don't think that. That's the beautiful thing about it, Santa. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> you certainly didn't. So, no, I don't follow. Did you trap the children or didn't you? I did. At least I believe I did. I haven't checked the figures yet, but it's all about the timing, you see. The tapes really were distributed in stockings, and that's the thing. They were delivered on Christmas Day. Right, so? <laughs> so how do you think I arranged for them all to actually listen to the tapes? I mean, what with the festivities going on all around them, you'd think it would get left to one side. Bit of old technology like that? Probably the least interesting present a kid's likely to get at Christmas these days, isn't it? So how do you imagine I caught their attention? Oh, I don't know, um... Attractive packaging? No, no, they were just unadorned cassettes with the name printed on a strip label along the top. Guess again. Uh, further enchantment. No, could have done, didn't need to. Give up? Yes, I suppose I do. How did you do it? 
I didn't. What? I didn't need to do anything but deliver the tapes. Every single child listened because there was nothing else to do. There were no other presents this year. Why ever not? Because, and this is, this is the really delicious thing, because I didn't make up the part about the children not writing to you. What? <laughs> All that was true. <laughs> Your real-world counterpart outside the tape probably probably went to lengths just as silly as you did in a pathetic bid for attention. No, no, no. no. You, you mean the, the children really didn't <laughs> write to me this year? No! <laughs> and it wasn't anything to do with you? <laughs> no, I couldn't believe it myself. No, it looks like I was right about you all along, Santa. I You're a fad. I don't understand You were it. a fad, and now they've all moved on and... Left you behind. Huh. And I suppose you've been here ever since, have you? I directed my full attention to the project, yes. Why? As you can see, I may have become slightly engrossed in my work. Him trapped? Him trapped like the rest of us? Well, that's a very vulgar way of putting it. And why might that be? Only, I've been carrying out my routine examinations, and I'm registering very high levels of Christmas spirit round here. Hooray, Christmas! Really? That can't be right. How can you tell? I've measured the level of Christmas spirit on this. And what's that? Spirit level. You can get him anywhere. Christmas! Christmas! Christmas is winning! But how? These tapes are protected against Christmas spirit. Well, some of it must have got him somehow, mustn't it? Yay! I wonder if it may have anything to do with those children not writing to Santa Claus. Boo! Biddly boo! They're mean! Uh, well, well I, I wouldn't go that far, but... It certainly doesn't seem as though they've got into the Christmas spirit very much, friend. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you see, I'm not one of your fictitious tape characters. Really? I've popped in from the outside when they found out there was something suspicious about these here tapes. Really? So I know what's been going on out there. It's been coming out in the news over the last few days. Local papers started to interview kids, ask them why they never wrote to Santa. They were expecting to hear that they were all too busy being addicted to video games or breaking windows and that. <laughs> but you know what they found. What did they find, you intolerable <laughs> imp? Nobody talked about it. The kids hadn't planned it together. There weren't any Facebook groups or hashtags. But the thing is, kids hear the news. They might not always understand it or care about it, but they hear the headlines and their parents talking. They know something about what's going on a lot of the time and they might extrapolate their own idea of what people could do to help. You know, ease the strain a bit. I don't what follow, What are I'm you afraid. bleating on about? <laughs> One child hears the phrase, economic crisis. Hears about cuts, hears about downturns and deficits, and thinks people are going hungry, and some kids won't have a Christmas. Well, you know, I mean, in the scheme of things, I've had a few Christmases in my time, and I have them again. Once we can sort out this financial problem, so I'll, I'll do my bit. I won't ask Father Christmas for very much this year, and whatever he would have given me goes to some other kid who might not have got anything on account of me being greedy. In fact, just this once, tell you what, he says, I'll not write to Father Christmas at all. I've got toys, I'm all right for now, and some people ain't. I'll leave it, just me, just once. Oh, what? And then... Unbeknownst to him, girl next door thinks the same thing. And next door to that. And by and by, though you'd never think it, this same thought goes through the head of every kid in the world. They all decide Santa can give presents to the other kids this year, not me. I don't need them. Just while things are bad. No. No! End result, not a child anywhere in the world wrote to Santa Claus this year. Everyone thought they didn't care. Turns out, they did. No! But if that's true, then... Then that would make this... The greatest outbreak of Christmas spirit since records began! <laughs> I don't think I need worry about you anymore, mate. Something tells me your day is threatening the well-being of these good elves might be numbered, sunshine. <laughs> no! Oh, I can't believe it! You come waltzing in to ruin my exquisite plans, and your only word of explanation is that you were sent by the regulatory board? Who are you? 
I'm the appointed overseer and gatherer of evidence of any breaches of code with regards to the rules set out within mind the safety of these here elves by my department of the North Polling Council. And what is your department? I'm from the... <coughs> Health and safety. Oh. oh, get lost. And I'm going to have to say, I'm afraid, that by the power invested in me by the rising good cheer among the world's children, I am hereby ordering this tape be evacuated by all personnel, except for yourself. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, there's so much Christmas spirit around here that I'm afraid you're basically trapped in a cocoon of pro-Christmas festivity. Oh. A perversion of the very web of hexes and enchantments no. you set up in the first place. Oh, how did this happen? Must have been a loophole, sir. One of those kids you sucked in must have somehow brought with them a sufficiently elevated amount of Christmas spirit no. that it singularly undid your spells. No, impossible. <laughs> Hooray! You're rubbish! No, I don't accept this. I don't understand. How could a simple child have subverted the complex and arcane magics I used to weave this magical net? It should have caught every child who engaged with it. How can it be that a simple boy such as... You. It's you! No, I recognize you now! You're the one who activated the Christmas effect. Do you remember me, boy? Yes. You're the anti snatter Come on, everybody out! No, I'm afraid there's too much snow around here for the normal you. teleportation to work, but we've provided a replacement sleigh service. Bit cramped, but it'll get you to safety. Come on, everyone! Oh, right. right. Oh, Everyone great. into the sleigh! <laughs> Come on! Bye bye, Empty Snatter! <laughs> oh, 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 good riddance! That's you going away <laughs> now, and I'm staying in the cave. Is everybody strapped in? Really? Oh, oh, yeah. well, oh, hang on. fantastic then. Brace oh, yourself! Great. Okay, ready? Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, oh. You can't trap me! I created this tape! Its power is a mere sliver stripped off the flank of my own! Mark my words, a cassette tape is not the bounded enclosed medium it once was. My consciousness may well become trapped here, but unlike the mortal children, I have proven before that I need no physical body to survive. One day, somehow, the contents of this cassette will find their way out into the world, and I will be free. All I need is some sort of link between this and the wider world, some means by which the sound trapped on a recorded cassette tape could be spread around the globe. They have such devices in the human world. But perhaps if the networks here could be connected to them by some circumstance... Oh. Oh. Oh, you beautiful fool. Oh, you exquisite imbecile! Oh, 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 you've done it again, Santa Claus! <laughs> Every time! <laughs> you've, you've done it again! Yet again! <laughs> this is not the last you'll see of me! I'll have my revenge yet! You mock my will! Okay, are you ready? I certainly yeah. am. This okay, is a very one. good idea. <laughs> you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings for a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. The year everyone forgot about Father Christmas was written and performed by Dave Bulmer in the December of 2010. This was an extrusion of my other Christmas stories, which can now be found at wigglehe.com. I can make this sort of thing thanks to my supporters at patreon.com forward slash demon tomato Dave. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We it's it's Kim. It's King. It's Kim. No, it's King. It's got a jig on the end. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And 
everybody. Goodbye. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Sincerely, we do wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>